<laughs> you were the funniest thing ever. Remember the pack? You remember the package? Dude, you actually lost that package. Yeah. It was your fault. At least don't He probably put like he put the address and he said Philadelphia. See, this is your fault. We all keep getting messed up where, where he's actually from. But he's just from America. States. He's from America. But since we've just started, yeah, before we started, yeah. I just got my ass whooped on FIFA. I don't know Big how that time. happened, but I blame you. I blame yeah. you. We got people in the back. I blame you. He told me he was shit. So I brought my level down to him, thinking he was shit. And don't I was underestimate, man. Yeah. Big he, L. Big L, but I'll get a rematch after we're done here anyway. Shall He's trying I, to run away without it. But for those no of you worries. that don't know who this is, this is Ahmed Farah, Somali fighter from the my States. Man. I ain't even going to try to figure out where you're from. <laughs> uh, before, we, before we begin, before yeah. we begin, big shout out to the guys at ATP for sorting this out. We've both got the merch on. Let's if go you ATP. guys want to check them out, the Insta link will be in the bio ATP athlete. Yeah. And if you want to cop some merch, we've got some on. Yes. If you want to cop some, head over to Amazon. The link will be there as well. Big up ATP. That's what they say, right? Big up. Big up ATP, man. Big up ATP, Big up baby. ATP. Let's go. I actually wore their shorts last fight. Yes. It Sponsored was, uh, ATP fighter really, as well. Really unique experience, man. Custom shorts. That was the first time I got them. And you Usually, slept someone in them as well. Yeah, exactly. They went pretty viral. I think over a million people have seen those shorts. But usually I'd run to the shops around, get some uh, Under Armour, and then I would grab, uh, I would go to logo places and uh -huh. just slap some eye flag and my gym's uh, logo, basically. Yeah, yeah. But ATP hooked me up, you know? So it was all done for him. I didn't him. have to do all the errands. All done for him, man. Exactly. It was good. What are you saying, man? First time in London. London's amazing. How man. are you finding it? You're I only here it. for a week, unfortunately. Sadly. Yeah. We're on the tail end now. You're, but yeah, I enjoy London. I enjoyed it. Um, we have, we've done a lot already. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah. You're outside, outside. Yeah. Saturday fights. Yep. How was that? Like the UK crowd. It was an amateur kind of event. Yep. Pro, amateur, pro. Yep. A bit of both. Yeah. How was it? So I was invited by Muhyiddin Abu Bakr, which is uh, one of the best MMA fighters in all of Europe. Um, not just Somali, but it's amazing that he's Somali. He's raising awareness like myself about the sport for Somalis. Um, but he basically invited me and man, I was shocked about the crowd. You know what's funny? I was talking to the guys earlier, Muhyiddin, and I was training with them and they were talking about how'd you find the crowd because the crowd yells some derogatory things in this, um, mm. in this side of the, the world. You know? oh, we'll get to that like, in a second. Yeah, it was crazy. We'll get to that in a second. The crowd was amazing anyway. He brought the yeah. ghetto with him. Yeah, yeah you... I heard last amateur fight. Yeah. The... Some chairs were thrown. Yeah, the last... <laughs> oh, we did need to send that video to people because I feel obviously the promotion, they take that, 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 they take that stuff kind of down, yeah. in it. they don't use it yeah. for promotional purposes. It's not a good yeah. look. But chairs were flying. I was in a predicament where I couldn't stay, so I had to kind of just leave. Get out of there. I weren't scared. Yeah. I, w I was doing something completely different. Yes. I had to get out of there. But chairs were being thrown. You know what's funny? Yeah? Chairs mm. were being thrown, but the two fighters, Muhyiddin and Kane, they were chilled. The most cordial, huh? Yeah, they were happy. They're like shaking hands and everything. They're like, no, we're good. Like, you, man, like, relax. It's not like that. You yeah. know, it's a competitive sport. Yeah, definitely. One wins, one loses. We didn't yeah. got caught in an armbar. Yeah. But anyway, talking about vulgar language, yeah, you went to Tottenham, Liverpool, and you went in the op block. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what he did? He should have shouted someone around here to get him a ticket into the Liverpool section, but he ended up getting a ticket online, third party yeah. website. Yeah. And he found himself in the Tottenham section. Terrible. He's hooded up, had his G-Lay on. <laughs> No one could see the Liverpool. I saw the Liverpool shirt after the game. You took I, it off I and tied, went to celebrate. I tied the hoodie just in case. Extra tight, extra everything. What was the atmosphere like? The atmosphere was ridiculous. So it they're saying game, game of the season. Yeah, it was yeah. a great game. Um, Liverpool and Tottenham, big stakes. Um, it was amazing, man. Big stakes for Liverpool, Tottenham. Yeah, for Liverpool, shit. exactly. But um, it was a great game. I hit everything, but I was in the op block. You're right. Um, I heard in London, man, they get shanks out and stadiums are always a little scary. Yeah. So I had to hide a little bit until the end of the game where I finally got to take it off and take a picture. It's kind of sad we didn't get to win, but... You know what he okay. tried to do? He tried to blend in. He tried to yeah. blend in. He got himself a pie at halftime. I said, no. <laughs> he got himself a pie I at I saw half your comments. Pie and mash hooligans. Pie and mash hooligans. And you were in and amongst them as well. What was yeah. the language like behind you when things were going oh wrong, like with the Tottenham God. fans? Oh, my God, dude. You can't. What are you doing? Ah. Yeah, the language it's is... Kind of like, like the fights, you know? Craziness. No, no, I think they're West. You know what you need yeah. to go to? You need to go to a West Ham game. Yeah. See, I'm a bit I'm a bit of an idiot. I went to West Ham versus Man United because I just want to see Ronaldo. That's mm. I won't say that's my goal. I know Messi's better in yeah. it, but I like Ronaldo. Yeah, of course, legend. I, I like Ronaldo. So I went to see Ronaldo. Yeah. Now, any stadium you go to, if you go behind the fans, yeah, yeah. behind the goal, sorry. Yeah. That's where I think like the most, the most to the keepers, huh? The proper, proper fans are behind the goals. Mm. The ones on the halfway line kind of thing. Yeah, it's very timid. Yeah, behind the goals where you hear all the abuse. 
Lord have mercy. The abuse from the West Ham fans, they're, they're huh? bad. Was the hair playing? Uh, to to everyone. Oh my oh, god. Oh, Luke Shaw about how fat he is. <laughs> you had the Ronaldo allegations in the alleged delegations. Yeah. Any player that Man United, anyone took Ronaldo taking dives, like yeah, falling yeah. down easily. The abuse was just like, yo. You know, it's a good thing. The London Stadium, I guess the crowd's a little pushed back from the goals. That's the uh, only. Okay. Is it? Yeah, it's pushed back because it's like Olympic style. They used to have the track. Mm. I remember that. But man, Oh, I'm yeah, sure yeah. London here. Stadium. Sorry, I thought you were talking about the Tottenham. I'm, I'm sure they hear it, you know. Oh, the they abuse. definitely hear it because yeah. behind, you know what? Behind the goal, you're actually pretty close because mm. they could bring that in. But when you're on the halfway line kind of thing, yeah, it isn't. It's not it. No, it's not any fun. But it was a good experience for me. Every time we scored, Liverpool score, I would like, oh, yes, let's go. And then after, I'd like, I'd look around. I'm like, who the fuck is watching you, me? You, you know? gotta be careful. You gotta be I very like careful. This nice old lady, but she was very kind. I was like, uh... I'm from the states. I didn't thought I was a Liverpool fan. I feel like she would have shanked me herself. But. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got to be very careful. You don't know who's carrying what. And you're in Tottenham as well. Tottenham's not like yeah. the safest of areas. In, yeah. If we're talking London, it, it's, it's getting better, but yeah. trouble, it can kick off in Tottenham as well. Even like Tottenham Arsenal games as well. Yeah. Things go left, you know, you see police on the horses and it's like proper. North London, man. North London Derby, huh? Yeah. I, that is crazy. I've been to a few, but luckily for me, the, the worst one was actually, I was next to the Tottenham fans. Yeah. Right next to them. I only had like two, the stewards in between yeah. and maybe two, two fans. Mm. Coins being dashed. Like you see it all the time. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Like kids going home early because they've yeah. got their head split from a coin toss. But Rio Ferdinand. Uh, that happened bruh. to him too, right? It, it's happened to a lot of players. They're getting Crazy. things thrown at them all the time. Who was it? Uh, Dimitri Payet in Marseille. Yeah. He got that recently. You thought he'd fall onto the floor like he got shot. Yeah. But the shithousery. That's what they call it, right? Shithousery. Shit but anyway, you're yeah. a fighter, innit? I know yeah. you like your football, you're a proper Liverpool fan. Yes. I saw some people, you said, Chuck, people were trying to clown you for like... No, man, that mm. happens. Like, yeah. you post anything Liverpool related these days, they're like, you're supporting this and that. It was the first time, like, I really did post Liverpool, so mm -hmm. I guess they, they never they seen didn't, it. They didn't know but you support. But I went through that John Joe Shelby, Jay Spearing, Andy Carroll. Oh, that was horrendous. Stuart Downing era. When I was a kid, man, but you know what? I love them. I love Gerrard. They always let us, right? Might I be love your manager Kenny Dalglish, even though he wasn't the best manager, but I went through that era. Okay, and so you've been a Suarez, diehard from day. But it's been a, it's been a while since we got a trophy mm. um, from from like, them times, yeah. Childhood, you know. Um, but we finally got it, the Premier League and the Champions League, the last couple of years. So. Do you think they win the Premier League this season before we wrap up talking I about reckon, football? I hope so. Yeah, That's you reckon? The What's yes. the goal for Liverpool this season? Champions think, League and I think anything that like Champions League, Premier League, or even FA Cup. Like if we get away with anything, it'll be good. Okay. But it will, it will be. It will be like Premier League or Champions League. That's what we're aiming. Yeah, 100%. It'll be good. Training today. You yeah. got to meet a couple of Somali fighters down here. Yes. Well, East London? East London, yeah. Let's yeah. say London, East yeah. London. Yeah. How was that? How was the it training? It was amazing, man. See, I thought you would have been joking about just having a laugh. Like, you know what, <laughs> let's have fun. But yeah. you come back, you had a nap. Oh, like yeah. You, were proper, pro you guys proper took it hard on each other. Yeah. No, I was, was tired, it? man. Um, Muhi invited us. Um, brother CK from Somali Gains. And Jess was also invited, the Dutch brother. Dutch Van, Hoonen. Van, Hoonen. Van Hoonen, he's a beast man, good looking guy too man, this guy, we were clowning him on that, but um, basically we just got a 10th planet jiu-jitsu class, we took the class, we just learned this very um, complicated heel hook, X guard mm -hmm. thing, um, but after those some proper grappling and good rounds, um, nice. Mohi took me to Dagestan Airlines, <laughs> Oh really? <laughs> the footage is out there, yeah. not yet, but you guys it will, will see be it, out it, was, there. it was a good stuff. Um, I taught CK some sparring. That guy doesn't really hit hands but um, or kicks, but we, we got in the cage a little bit. But did, it was awesome, man. Did you spar with Jess? Jess, I didn't get to spar him, but he held some mitts for me, and we grappled. Nice. Jess always talks about it. he's not a good grappler, but he's a great grappler. Yeah, man. he was talking. He was saying on Saturday, he's grappling. My grappling is zero. I said, you need to go to Dagestan and yeah. go to Russia, go to one of these. Like, my grappling is zero. That's the thing. It's not zero, man. And it's apparently, good. He, he's yeah. actually pretty decent. He's decent, man. You see, he's this is the boy. problem with people. Just like you at FIFA, yeah. your fault again. Yeah. You know, people lie to you. They make you underestimate them. And then you come, they put hands on you. You're seeing yourself going Dagestan Airlines. Exactly. Well, for him, it's Dutch Airlines, isn't it? Take <laughs> Dutch it Airlines. It's Dutch Airlines. Oh, my God. No, but it was awesome, man. We, we had uh, Elmo um, recording our good brother. Yeah, I didn't know he was Somali, well. by the way. Legend. Um, mm -hmm. But he's recording for Muhi's documentary. Yep. We had some good footage, good photos. I just posted actually right before this. So mm -hmm. it was a good time. Obviously, um, Farah's Instagram will be in the description as well for you yes. to check out and you will find him there as well. Yes, we got to get to 20K now. That's the goal, man. Yeah, 10K. Well, you started off at 900 last year. You're on 10K this year. We did 10 times, like a cryptocurrency, man. Yeah, yeah, we're talking times. about it. <laughs> this is some big numbers, he man. Did, he done a 10X. 10X. I'm still waiting for my 10X. <laughs> if we do a 10X next year, what are we at? 
A hundred. So from when you started, like, proper, like, your investment of, like, 900, and we say, this is where we begin, yeah, we've got 900 followers. Yeah. Let's build up the page. You would have done 100x. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's the that stuff is, of dreams, isn't it? Yeah, it's the stuff, like, I would not believe it. You know, I was very timid about posting at the beginning. I tell a couple people, um, but when I first started, like, competing, because I started competing this year, um, we'll talk about the fights later. Yeah, but of course. When I first started competing, like, the training camp and all that, I didn't feel, like, comfortable to post it yet. You know, what mm -hmm. my friends think, what my family and all this. But once the posting started and people showing support, um, it just kept rolling and the numbers speak for themselves. Yeah, now, they keep you know? getting up, they keep getting up. And yeah. you're young as well. Exactly. So with time, of course, it will. If you're inshallah. on an upward trajectory, you go, inshallah. Inshallah, that's it, man. But Let's talk fighting. Yeah. Let's talk fighting, yeah? Yeah. Let's start off with your journey. Yeah. Because I find it fascinating sometimes. Like, I like to hear people's stories, how they started, how they got into things. Yeah. Like, I tried to do the whole getting into fighting thing. My dad shut it down very quick. <laughs> uh, you want to be a fighter? Uh, yes, you. Kenyan dad, huh? Uh, proper African dad. You want to be a fighter? School is there. Madrasa is there. And we are good over <laughs> here. Us. Yeah, the football Nothing dream. Else. I had the football dream as well. But I know I've aged like fine wine almost. Like, I was rubbish when I was 16, 17. But you're better now. I'm, I don't know why yet, but I just feel like I'm way better. Apart from my fitness, mm. which that needs work anyway. Questionable, huh? That's very questionable. Mm. But touch, everything, passing, shooting, all you of that. you matured. Under I've it. matured. Yeah. So I know I would never have made it. Yeah. Like, I remember I used to, when I was living in Kenya, my, my dad would send money for the academy to go. Yeah. To go play. My yep. mom like, nah, this boy comes home all the time. His legs hurt. <laughs> nah, nah, let him study. Andrew, let him study. Bit. That makes sense. Let him study. How did you begin? So I was a big MMA fan. Um, I guess after, like, the age of, like, 12, 13, um... I was just a big GSP fan. I got, I saw the Conor rise. I saw the Habib rise later on. Um, but I was just proper into like good moments, iconic moments in UFC. Mm -hmm. um, that was my go-to. I didn't really watch anything else. I didn't watch like, I watched WWE before, um, but UFC was like my big thing growing up. Um, that was about like seven, eight years ago. And I actually just, I would go to like uh, the back room, like my room and just shadow box a little bit. There was no gyms near me around that time. Um, but I just was like, you know what? One day I'm gonna step in to the mm -hmm. cage and I'm gonna create one of these moments that you see. Oh right, you actually had it in your mind at oh, 12, yeah. 13. As, as a I'm kid, gonna step you know? in the cage. Yeah, man, I loved oh, it that much, you know. Okay. Um, and then later on, I guess I was always a soccer player, so I was I was focused on soccer as well. Um, in the states, you play in middle school and high school and all mm -hmm. throughout. I played one year in college too, um, my freshman year, but. Junior year in high school, I was like, you know what? What can go wrong? Let me just go to a gym. Um, a good friend of mine, Kabir Armani, an Afghan brother, started um, a gym, basically, MMA school in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, where I live. Mm -hmm. And I just decided to go in, take the kickboxing classes. And that was about four and a half years ago now. How um, old were you at the time? 16? Around 16, yeah. I guess I was 16. Um, 16 and a half, maybe 17. But... Yeah, I just started training kickboxing. I already had an idea of a lot of the techniques. I already can talk to my instructors, my teachers about the MMA because I was a proper fan, even as a mm -hmm, kid, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, like, they're like, this kid is actually, like, he knows his stuff, but we can just groom him into um, yeah. being a fighter, you know? Um, but I got to a level where I got so good, and a couple years later on, I would be on and off, obviously. I wouldn't train every day because I was mm -hmm. focused on soccer and school and other things, but I started really going consistent about, like, two and a half years ago. Um, and then he just started training me, showing me around. We went to Virginia, sparred uh, amateurs, pros. We go to New York a lot. And he hired me full time to be an instructor at the school. And I'm actually one of the head, in, uh, the head instructor, basically, because um, he's the owner. He doesn't teach as much. Mm -hmm. um, but he really has groomed me, instructor Abdullah and the other instructors, to do the work full time for the kids and give back. Nice. So it's been a blessing. So that's life outside of fighting, almost. Like yeah. how we'll get onto that in a minute. Yeah. But. I want to talk about, like, you see your parents. Yeah. How do you do that? Because obviously, like, I tried it, and mine got shut down very quickly. Mine was at a very base level of training. Yeah. Like, whenever I train MMA or whenever I train Muay Thai, shout out Ultra Fitness Gym in Kenya, whenever yeah. I go over there and I train, yeah, that's coming out my own pocket. Yeah. Like, because obviously now I'm older, I, I don't need your permission. Yeah. Like, I ain't going to ask you for nothing. I don't need your money exactly. to go. Like, it comes out my pocket, I pay. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, I'm in a position to do so. Go play. Yeah. Uh, go train. Yeah. And go home in it, but yeah. I know it's not going to amount to becoming a fighter. That, that's gone. Definitely. And maybe looking back, hindsight, you yeah. know, 2020 is like, maybe, maybe it's not really for me, innit? Yeah. Have a bit of fun, but that's about it. Yeah. How'd that conversation go with your parents? So, so I guess... From I, training, yeah. mum, you know what? I want to be a fighter. Exactly. Somali mum as well, African exactly, parents as yeah. well. Yeah, all most of African. Any parent as well. Like, Cultured even, parents. Even you see, like, the biggest athletes in the sport, you know? Like, how did you convince your parents? That's always a good question, you mm. know, to ask. Because it is some sort of, like, almost gladiator sport where it is life or death sometimes, you know? You can actually die in this, you can get hurt, you know? 
paralyzed. There's a lot of terrible things that can come out of it. Um, is everything good? Are you all right, bro? Awesome. Nice calm, nice calm. Behind the scene, <laughs> it's not... <laughs> Mo with the cough. Well, was that a C19? I don't want to say their name before, you know, I get yeah, the video taken. <laughs> they, they slapped the C19 logo. I don't want that. C19, bro, you got to be careful nowadays, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's going to bring bad noise, like the wind noise, yeah. the Omnicon. Yeah, oh. but I guess what helped with my parents is um, I started I started training and Kabir, my, my coach, he, he didn't ask money from me. Like, he was well off, his school was developing well. He didn't really, like, and I was in high school, I wasn't working or anything, mm -hmm. um, but he didn't really, like, make me pay at all. And I just went in, you know, I took it full advantage of it. And then when I started working there, my parent, my my mom was like, yo, you actually like got a job doing that. Like, you know, that was like a big moment too. I would say like really almost equivalent to starting fighting. Mm -hmm. um, but then she started trusting me. I started and I get paid very well for a young guy at the gym because we know each other very well. We're almost similar in age. He's like four or five years older than me. Okay. Um, but that helped a lot. And then this year is the year I started competing. Mm -hmm. And I actually took my first fight without telling my mom. Ah, um, here we go. Here we here go. We go. Yeah, <laughs> I know you have to get that first, that first one out of the way. But I told, uh, I told my coaches and everyone, I was like, hey, I'm going to compete. You know, I think I'm ready. You know, you guys, you guys know I'm ready. And they believed it too. And we took a fight in New York. It was a kickboxing fight. Um, before the, you go too far, how did you, like, at what point before taking your first fight, like, you sat there and you're like, you know what? Yeah. I'm ready to fight. So like, I feel I'm like ready I was... to step in because you need a mad confidence yeah. as well to go in. Yeah. Like I know me, anything that approaches anything like confrontational, yeah. my heart rate starts to go up straight mm. away. I'm yeah. ready. I'm not scared of nothing, but yeah. like my heart's beating straight away. Yeah. I always felt like I was a sportsman, and like I always felt like I was. I wanted to put on a show. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like as a kid, I would get, I would get in fights at school. Main character for just, syndrome for just talking shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I would talk so much. And I would, I, I yeah, was we've strong. seen, we've seen with the FIFA right now. Yeah. He's be, he was quiet the whole time. <laughs> the moment he got ahead, <laughs> sly comment, one little comment, it gets under yeah. you a little bit. Yeah, just to, nah, cause you know what it yeah. was, yeah. It's the fact that you're quiet the whole time. Yeah, like, hold that L, bro. Nah, 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 nah. You're Slight not taking balance. it easy. Stop for a bit. Yeah, N another goal goes in. Yeah, you sure you're good, bro? Just pass the <laughs> controller. Like, the fuck that come from? Like, you've been chilled the whole time. Like, he's not saying nothing. So no, I can it, see how it, you wind it people up. It comes out sometimes, you know? You I've been humbled uh, growing up, but I've got my fair share of ass whoopings from parents and... Did you get into a lot of fights growing up? I didn't get into a lot of fights, but I had, I had like, the average amount of fights, as, I guess, as a kid. You get, mm -hmm. you get into those you fights at the cafeteria lounge and, yeah, you know, yeah. you get through it, maybe suspension. But eventually I learned, you know, like, hey, you can't be a dickhead out in public. Mm -hmm. um, and... I just started training and that even got me more humble, more respectful. And I, I got, I know the extent of violence now where I don't go out there looking for trouble. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically my mentality was, you know what? I'm going to put on those shows. I always loved as a kid watching, mm -hmm. even if it's like just a small crowd, you know, that moment where your music plays, you know, you get in there and I, I feel like my, the weapons I have are so um, diverse, the high kicks, the teeps, the elbows, knees. And I just went in there. Um, yeah, you're and a long guy I, as well. You're, I took the fight. Six foot, isn't it? Yeah, six foot for the weight. Six foot. Um, there was a lot of confidence builders. That's one of them, the, the reach, the height. And um, I was young at the time too. Like I was 19. It was back in March, I believe. Um, so it was a perfect time for me to start. And I was like, you know what? Let's, let's get it off the list um, and just start rolling. And that was a kickboxing fight. I won a decision. Mm -hmm. What it was, it was like a dominant decision. I want to. Was it one rounds. of them ones where you're wearing? Is it the one you're wearing your yeah, shin? Yeah, that shin first, shin that first one was yeah. proper protected. Like I had headgear, shin guards. Um, but I landed some really good shots. The knockout didn't come. Um, but there's a lot of things you can see in that fight that I still, um, still done in the last three fights. Mm -hmm. um, like the flying knees, the high kicks, they're all shown in that first fight. You can see like the raw version of me. See that, that fight, I thought you finished it. I thought the ref called it off. I didn't realize it was a decision. It's the one where you front kicked the guy to the body and then he ended there, isn't it? Which that one? was the last move of the fight. Which one? You front kicked him to the body. like you. you... The kickboxing fight? Yeah. Or was that not it? No, that was the MMA one. That was an MMA one. You're talking about the recent one, right? Like, no, 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 no. Mm. That, that was a high kick. Yeah. No, you front kicked the guy to the body and then he didn't look hurt or anything. Unless time ran out. Yeah. I must have not heard it in commentary or something. The ref was like, nice. Oh, yeah, done. yeah, it was over. Um, that why, one wasn't. Why was that? It was a bit weird to it me. Was, it wasn't the most professional. Okay. The way he stepped in was a little odd. Like, he yeah. stepped in earlier than the bell rang. Um, ah, okay, that's, that's why. Happened. That's, that's why, why it looked a little odd. And the audio wasn't great in that one. But that's, when, that's how you start out with every fight, you know? 100%. Um, but then after that, we took a kickboxing fight in May. Um, it was during uh, lockdown time still. Um, it was this year, but 
still the U.S. was in lockdown, but I took it all the way in South Carolina, mm-hmm. which is a 10 plus hour drive from where oh, I am. Oh, wow, okay. Um, yeah, America is a big place, you know. Exactly. And you would never think it, but we took it all the way in South Carolina. Me and my coaches accepted a fight. Another kid was zero and zero. Um, it's funny, we actually cross-trained at the gym in uh, Virginia, Kaizen MMA, mm-hmm. and we'd see pictures of him training there with the same guys I train with, and you hear it all the time in the pros, like, they ask, like, hey, how was he? They yep. ask the other guys. So we had a couple of Afghan brothers, we asked, like, hey, how's this guy in training? How does he look? Mm-hmm. A lot of guys would give confidence, like, hey, you, you, will, f- you will do well in the striking department. Oh, you'll do really? This. Yeah, but not in, like, a... That's what, fucked up. Like, you, no, you're no, snaking the no, guy. No, no, it's not, Am it's I wrong? Not, it's not that. It's cross-training. So a lot of the guys would say the same about me to him. You know what I mean? I still messed because, up, though. Beca- no, no, it's not messed up because... You know what I mean? It, no, I don't, he's because he's not. Because when you cr- when you cross train, when you cross train, and I feel like I was cross training at that gym. Is that, what do you mean? Is that like you're not a permanent member of that no. gym? No, okay, you go okay, like okay, once okay. in a blue moon. Ah, you know okay. what I mean. So you've trained there a exactly. bit before, so they've seen you. But that's about it. You're exactly. not permanent. You're but not I knew the guy. guy. I knew the guys a lot better. Okay. Um, and they like I'm not pointing anyone out, but they would tell me like, hey, we know you longer. Basically, the coaches of that gym, that guy doesn't train there anymore because he saw that that gym kind of prefers me in the flyweight uh-huh. division to him, you know oh, what I mean? Oh, wow. And it's that, it's that uh, political as well, like at amateur level as well. It oh, gets political like a, that as well. It, not political, but you can just tell, you know? Like, even the guys, that gym that we cross-trained at was at the fights. Mm. They actually didn't coach me because they're like, hey, we cross-trained him too. Okay. But when, you, when they're in the crowd, you can tell, like, who they're... Like, I can tell on camera who the coaches are looking to see and the conversations I've had with them. Um, to be fair, because the coaches, it's an investment as well for them, isn't it? Yeah. Like a fighter, like, you get... Yeah. He looks like a good prospect. Let's bring yeah. him into my gym. Yeah, and that, that school is very big, Kaizen MMA. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, no, there's no politics in anything about them. They're actually really straight on. Okay. They're like, hey, we cross-train both you guys. You guys are both young. Go at it, you know? Mm-hmm. You guys have coaches, obviously, in Pennsylvania, and the kid was from Maryland, okay. two different states other than Virginia. And they're like, dude, just go at it, crush it, and we support both you guys, you know? Okay, good, um, good. But it was awesome, man. It was a great experience. That one ended in a draw. I thought I could finish him in the second. I hurt him really bad with the, the same head kick I knocked out my recent fight in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought I could have done a lot more to hurt him. And there was there were some reasons why I'd, I thought it didn't finish. Um, some injuries beforehand, but um, it's not an excuse. It ended a draw, um, but it was okay. It was a learning experience. I went three rounds, three minutes in MMA, which is like rare as that age at 19, you know? Okay. Did, you, did your parents go to that one? Because it's your no. second one now. It was 10 hours they, away. That one, that no one far, came. It was almost far. like quarantine kind of fight, lockdown. Okay, okay. Um, it was like Yaz Island, fight yeah. island kind of vibes. But What do you think about Yaz Island? I would love to fight Yaz yeah. Island. Um, fact, it's a bit bougie, isn't it, though? It's a little bougie. Yeah. Like a bit, a bit, all the shakes, uh, <laughs> like exclusive. I tried to go to Yaz It's expensive. It's, yeah. not, it's not cheap at all. Yeah. Like you got to have some proper dough to go to Yaz Island. I went to Dubai last year. And Abu Dhabi was locked off from the rest of UAE because yeah, yeah. that's where the heads are. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't really get to go to Yas Island and all that. We actually went to the border and they stopped us and made us go back. But yeah, they're in their own From the bubble. UFC, it looks amazing. Yeah, um, a lot of the fighters seem to like actually going there. Apart from the, the number one complaints, the Formula One going on, like the cars yeah, driving, the cars. they can't sleep at night. I feel like for me, I like Instagram, I like pictures, I like putting on content. Mm-hmm. I would go crazy with Yaz Island. The beach is there, the octagon at the beach, I would go awesome with it. But um, it kind of felt like that. There, was no, there wasn't a huge crowd because a, a lot of the guys in that show were from faraway states, Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, Maryland. And we traveled all the way to South Carolina. Everyone just met up. Mm-hmm. Um, that one, my coaches were there and basically it just ended a draw. We had to drive back. It is what it is, you know. But that's the game. It was a good lesson to learn. Let's move on to third fight. Yeah. Because there's two knockouts coming now, aren't there? Yeah. There's two knockouts now. There's two coming up. Yeah. There's two coming up. Yeah. So this one was, you caught the guy with a right hook. Yeah. And he went night-night. But yeah. he got up straight, almost straight, not straight away, like a couple seconds later. Yeah. One of them was where it's almost like, I won't say a flash knockout. Yeah. But the person's kind of gone to sleep. Yep. Conscious has come back. You've gone up and you're like, hey, why are you stopping the fight kind yeah, of yeah. thing. He was, his How head was bounced hard. Um, this fight was actually accepted um, as the MMA fight happened. So we were actually talking to the promoter. Um, so it was almost a week and a half, not even two weeks after the MMA fight that mm-hmm. I fought this one. Um, I actually walked out healthy from the MMA fight. Um, the draw. The draw. Um, so I took this one. It was in New York as well. The first minute of that fight is very interesting. That kid is 5-0. and mm-hmm. um, He was the champ at 125. He's very scrawny and skinny for the weight. But for kickboxing, the weight doesn't matter as much in MMA that it does in MMA. So 
he had some very good technique. I thought he was like outlanding me in that first minute, mm -hmm. but there was just this, there was a very evident power advantage and height advantage. Every kick I threw like almost moved his body if it didn't even land. Mm -hmm. um, then I threw a switch flying knee. The knockout was, I, I jabbed, I stepped back in with a switch flying knee and then I threw a, like a right overhand hook and it caught him flush on the chin. Yeah. He was, his head bounced so hard, like you can hear it. And I just walked uh, away. See, from the audio, you can't really hear it. You see, yeah. sometimes with the audio, you can't really hear these things unless yeah. you're in there. Yeah. Oh, I heard it. And like the exchange was so fast that you can almost see me covering for the, the counter. Mm -hmm. But he was well on his way down when his head hit the ground. And I just walked away. And the ref, the ref gave him time. I'm like, this guy is out. But he somehow fumbled up to his feet. Yeah, when the consciousness came back. Exactly. Like what, he, what's going on? Ref, ref, no, exactly. no, no. Um, he was very adamant that the fight should have continued. Mm -hmm. He was very mad. His coaches tried to calm him down because they knew like it was a proper stoppage. But, okay. Um, that now, was a good one. With that one there, after you were in tears. Yeah. Why? I had a lot didn't, of injuries. Didn't say yeah. nothing about you in the post yeah. fight. He didn't even ask you. Yeah. But you were in tears on that one. I was like, yeah. although you, might, you obviously you're starting to do out of, out of yeah. the cage. Something happened. Yeah. No, out previous. of the out of the cage, man. The previous one, the MMA one. I dislocated my shoulder three weeks before the MMA fight. Mm -hmm. Badly. Um, I was wrestling and I st like once uh, a 170 welterweight joined us out of nowhere. Like out of the blue, guys, let me join you guys. And I was shooting against him against the cage, and I was really deep on it. Um. And he basically, he's a good friend of mine. He basically sprawled on top and I was cross training. He sprawled on top of me and my shoulder dislocated. Like it was properly tore out and it was almost sticking out of my, uh, my pec by the end of it. Mm. And that was three weeks away from the MMA fight. And everyone knew I had a fight. So they're like, I hope this guy's okay. You know, I hope mm -hmm, he can mm -hmm. still fight. Um, basically I sat down for a week, didn't do anything. Maybe like did the bike a little bit, some legs. And I trained so long for the MMA uh, camp that I was like, you know what, this fight is going to go on, whatever, it's going to happen. But in the MMA fight, it was evident that my lead hand, my jab was just very like tough. To, I was, it was very hard to pump it out. Mm -hmm. um, that, and the grappling exchanges got it more tired. Yeah. You know how it is. So the you were in pain around as well it. during yeah. the fight as The well. muscles and the ligaments around it take a long time to heal. Mm -hmm. And when it dislocates once, it's easier for it to dislocate again. Yep. Um, and I've talked to the professionals on it. But I have a lifting program that um, obviously has helped with it now, mm -hmm. that builds up the muscles again. But for that one, there was that, there was the head kick I hurt him with in round two that I mentioned. Yeah. My foot was like proper beat up from that. This is the bruised. MMA fight with the, the MMA fight. fight. Yeah. The MMA fight. It was bruised up. And I, I took the kickboxing fight anyway. It was for a title. That's why. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Let's go. The kid was 5-0. and oh. um, And when I knocked him out, man, and the, the fight wasn't going smooth by no, no, any no, no, means. No. Like, it was like one minute of just him. Like doing well, moving well, yep. you know. I knew like the power advantage was at there. My coaches knew it too. Um, but when I knocked him out, I was just like relief, like get the hell out of here. I knew I could beat that kid, but mm -hmm. there was doubts in my head. And it happens as a young yeah. fighter, I'm we'll sure. Talk, we'll talk about that um, as well. But when it happened, I was just like, let's go, you know. Like um, I was just out of it because I knew I knew it was summertime. It was it was July, the beginning? No, it was beginning of June actually. Because uh -huh. that one happened in May. It was June. I was like, I know I can enjoy my summer now. I got a kickboxing belt. I was just happy. Like, let me go to vacation. Let me get out of this fight yeah. game for a little bit. Because it was three fights by second quarter of one year, mm -hmm. which is a lot, you know? Yeah, but when um, you're starting off, sometimes you, have you, to. you pick up those miles yeah, yeah. very quick. You have when to. you get to the big leagues where you spread them out. Exactly. Two fights a year, one fight a year. Exactly. But where you got to, like, experience is in the cage yeah. for you lot. Definitely. It's not, you can train as much as you want, but it's until you same. get in there, it is not the same. It's not the same. And I've seen the look on people's faces. Like, I've seen people sparring in the gyms. Yeah. Like, confident as shit. Yeah. The moment they walk out, yeah. like, I'm very observant. Yep. So I know it's, like, little subtle things on, like, their, their face, the demeanor. It's not the same. Definitely. It's not. It's not the it's same. It's very hard to carry, like the confidence, the, the swagger, because there's guys that will tear your ass up in the gym. Um, but the second, like, their music pumps up, like, a little bit stiff, a little bit scared, the muscles tense up, you know? Yeah, you've got that adrenaline running through, your heart's exactly, racing. Exactly. So it's very hard to just keep it calm, keep it... And I feel like that's the thing that anyone can improve. It's just knowledge on the game and adrenaline, and knowledge on, like, what's going on in your body. Like, mm -hmm. hey, I have adrenaline pumping for this reason. I'm about to go into a fist fight, you know? Yep. Let me calm my heart rate down, let me relax. Um, and that's what I always try to do when the announcer's trying to, I just move around, I just crawl What do you like backstage? Before we go to the viral head kick knockout, yeah. Yeah. What do you like backstage? Before walking out, obviously you're still at amateur level, but yeah. like you were telling me beforehand, in America, like here they've got the padded gloves. Yeah. You're not allowed to elbow. Yeah. Whereas you lot are. 
Oh, it's you're allowed so to, it's, it's different. pretty much pro rules with amateur fighters. Yeah. So that's why we different. accepted a fight in Virginia. The rules in Virginia are very lenient. So every state um, in the U.S. has their own regulations, their mm -hmm. own sanctioning body. Um, the state we're in, Pennsylvania, requires shin guards in the rounds or two minutes. Yeah. So what do you think two minute rounds? Who wins those those fights? Like what style do you think? More aggressive. More aggressive and what like? And it's uh, ah, wrestling in it. Yes. Yeah, time wise. Exactly. Time, time. And Pennsylvania is known for wrestling. Um, Penn State is there, which is like one of the best wrestling programs. So a lot of those wrestling um, promotions, uh, MMA promotions, have just wrestlers. They hold mm -hmm. for a minute, strike for a little bit, they win the round, two minute rounds. And shin guards, you can't really KO them with a kick. So we never like, even for myself, my style especially, we never accept a fight in Pennsylvania. We go to New York or we go to Virginia. Virginia allows pro rules for amateurs. That means elbows to the head, on the ground yeah. as well, knees, everything. Um, they allow everything, basically. Fine margins, um, So the last, two, the last two MMA fights I've had, in South Carolina, they do the same rules as Virginia, except mm -hmm. for no elbows and no knees to the head. Okay. Um, but Virginia is everything. And backstage, man, I just felt calm. I felt loose. We knew the style matchup coming in because that kid wrestled all throughout high school and I'm sure middle school, of course. But, and I think he's just going into college to wrestle. So he was, he was 19, I was 20. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not much of a difference. No, no, no. Um, but it was his debut. But he wrestled a lot. We knew he had some sort of uh, striking, but nothing crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. So evidently, we just game, came up with the game plan of, hey, let's not get our back against the cage. Let's feint a lot. There's, in that 18 seconds, you can see the feints I throw. Um, yeah, there was a lot of feints. A lot of feints right away. There was... In the fight, there was the first one. There was very heavy feint, and I was just trying to gauge a reaction, and he overreacted. Um, then there was a small couple ones. There was like three other feints after, and he just started res disrespecting the feints less and less and more and more. I guess he mm -hmm. didn't respect the feints anymore. And the last feint I threw right before the head kick, he didn't show any reaction. Like he's like, "Oh, this guy's just feigning to feint." And um, when I saw that reaction, I loaded my hips and just was like, Shafi, the first kick you throw, kill this guy. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what's th going through my head because um, I feigned a lot, but I just wanted reactions. So when I threw it, same thing as the last feint. He didn't give me any reaction of defending the kick. Um, and I throw my kicks lead leg. I don't switch my feet or anything because I'm from a Taekwondo school. So yeah. boom, it landed flush on the chin. He was out. Um, yeah, night, night. I'll play that video. I'll put that video in yeah. straight so people can see exactly yes. what you're talking about because yeah. it was disgusting. It was <laughs> disgusting. It was an awesome, it was awesome a nasty, KO, nasty knockout. I think that one will be a feather in my cap even when I'm in UFC, inshallah. Inshallah. Like, UFC will play that clip for When they're running your promos. Exactly. Yeah, when they're running I feel your like, promos. Because like, very professional promotion. It looks prof it looks pro, literally. No mm -hmm. shin guards, no headgear. Um, and the way that kick, like the sound it made, because there's two angles. That cinematographer, Asan, shout out to him. His angle is one of the loudest smacks you'll ever hear from a kick. Um, mm -hmm. So I, it was a real good feather in my cap, and it went viral on social media. Um, so you've got the style for it as well. The Taekwondo kind of the long kind of style whereby you can just lift up your leg. Yeah. Clean someone out. Exactly. It's like almost like a bit like karate. One shot, one kill. That's what they're trained to do. Exactly. One shot, one kill. Yeah. Taekwondo is very like all leg dexterity and stuff. Yeah. Be able to lift up your leg out of nowhere. Yeah. It's like we were talking about earlier. We we're talking about hook kicks and stuff like lead. Yeah. Lead leg hook kicks. Conor McGregor. If you watch the first fight with Dustin Poirier. Yeah. Immediate Starts pressure. Out. Yeah. Hook kick from the, the last week. Cage Warriors. Um, the Oh, who was it? Will yeah. Curry. Yeah. Lord have mercy. He come out very quick. If he landed that... Crazy. The fight would have been done. Huh? It would have been done. Because I met him outside yeah. as well. And he was, I'm like, yo, that hook kick was that close. Yeah. He's like, yeah, he just lifted up his leg like this. And he come like <laughs> so, right this to my head. He's like, yeah, you like that, yeah? yeah? yeah. I said, yo, if that come full power, yeah. you're and night They night. know the parts of the foot. Like in Taekwondo and everything, you have to hit with specific parts of the foot. These mm -hmm. hook kicks, have to, you have to flex your foot so that it's concentrated, the surface area, you're hitting smack with the heel. Yep. There's obviously a slapping version. Those won't provide the KOs, but if you hit the heel, dig it into the temple or behind the ear, yeah. or even tip of the chin, mm -hmm. you get those KOs, you'll, those you'll, sweet you'll spots. You'll sleep someone. Yeah. Now you've knocked out someone with a punch and a high kick. Yeah. Obviously, you had a lot going into the one that you knocked the person out with the hook. Yeah. Which one's more satisfying? Ah, uh, man, it's hard to go against Oh, really? That. I'd say the high kick. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to go against that high kick. Um, 
the punch I thought in the moment felt more satisfying. Like this one, I wasn't emotional because mm. I like I knew like when I threw like right away when I threw those feints, the reactions were just like adding up. Like I was like, oh, these are good reactions. You know, the first one, he's like, oh shit, what's going on? I overloaded him. Mm -hmm. Then the next three, he's like, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna react like I did with the first one. So, so he start, he started disrespecting me a little bit. I'm like, this is a wrap, you know. Um, loaded my hips and blasted it and. It was a. I was walking away before he even hit the ground. Yeah, you knew. You, you knew. know. What's yeah. that feeling like? Way by you know. You know, walk offs are so rare. You yeah. know this sport. You yeah, know how 100%. rare walk offs are. So it's like, when I when I got that walk off and I literally just circled the cage. I could see my mom. My mom was there at that fight. My okay. whole family was there. She made it. Mama made yeah. it. Mama made oh, it. Oh, made it, man. <laughs> but um, my whole family was there. I walked to their side. Boom. They're just like, delirious. You know, mm. like oh my god. You know. Um. I just tried to stay calm. My corner was super crazy too, yep. um, which is amazing that you know you, they support you so much. But I just went to the, I just circled all the way around, went to the camera, and I was just like, I do this every effing day. You know, that's yep, what I 100%. said to the camera, and that's really what I do. Like all my teammates say, dude, you throw that kick so often, um, and it showed in that fight, like perfect timing. The feints help, you know. Mm -hmm. Talking about feints here, because I'm, I don't, I'm not a layman, so I won't really do very kind of layman kind of convo here when it yeah. comes to feints and reading feints yeah how'd you get to that yeah like where you got you can you it's, can like because it's all mma is yeah. a very split second yeah. very so quick changing seen, you twitch your hips you see the man move that way yeah you lift up your leg yeah. you know we're doing yeah. with, with jess and you lot with like yeah. the stepping in yeah and kind of uh, ducking under yeah i was talking to muhi earlier uh -huh. um there's there's few trends that start in mma now um the calf kick is one of them mm -hmm. and a lot more fainting is evident now mm -hmm. because of guys like adesanya um, fainting, it's, you're right, it's a split second thing. You don't go into a fight and say, I'm going to faint this, and if he reacts this way, I'm going to do this. Yeah. There's none yeah. of that shit. Yeah, not, there you if go. someone tells you that's bullshit, because, mm. dude, I, I had to like track back those 18 seconds. What did I really think in the moment? And I had to dig deep to get it out. You so know? it's all in the moment, very it's quick. All in, just, it's all in the moment, you know? Your brain's and firing. if you spar enough, if you see so many scenarios like that, mm -hmm. you will find your way to the treasure. You know what I mean? Okay. So I was showing feints. I was like, let's see reactions, reactions, reactions. But yes. in the moment, you're not thinking, let me see the reaction. It's, boom, okay. Yeah. Like, your mind's just registering it. Yeah. Almost out of practice, a yeah. lot of practice. Subconsciously, yeah. you've seen he's gone that way. Exactly. Or he's not bit. And you're just there, you're moving. It's definitely subconscious. Very it's not sub something okay. like, it's not something that you're saying like, oh, he did that. Let me do this now. Mm. Like, you don't even have time to say that sentence. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Um, and there's always a feeling out process in MMA. Um, but that one, I, the feeling man. out process for me was fainting. Let mm -hmm. me feel out how he reacts to faints, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's going to be a good thing going in the future. My faints, the hip faints, because every a hip faint is like a front kick. It's a right hand, elbow. It represents everything on the right side. Yep. Vice versa with your left side. So if you faint the hips, it's like, what is coming? Is a punch coming, a leg kick coming? Mm -hmm. um, so they can overreact. They can drop hands. They can... You know, yep. um, block for high kicks, but fainting, man, it's it's definitely an art in itself. Damn. Kind of like heel hooks in jiu-jitsu, you know. It's just a dark art. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of strikers don't know anything Rusima, about fainting. Rusima Paul Harris. Yes. That guy's. I don't want to say the word. Ridiculous. He, he, yeah, but he's a bit. He's a bit. He psych holds on a little. He's too a long. bit. He's a bit psycho, isn't he? Yeah. He wants. He wants to take it. It's a souvenir for him. Yeah. Heel hooks are nasty. Yeah. Like someone like someone like me that suffers from like I've got a permanent ankle injury until I get surgery done. Yeah. That ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Like But did you did you see um Nate Diaz threw a crazy faint the other day? He went viral in the crowd. <laughs> how, in the crowd. Oh no, so that you know shows how embarrassing you, that is. Yeah. No, no, that shows uh, you the perfect example oh of my God. how trained fighters are. Nate Diaz <laughs> is relentless. <laughs> That's two for flinching. <laughs> Because this kid, like, he's an amateur, but he wasn't like, ah, you know, he didn't freak out. He didn't like, mm. you know what I mean? But a regular guy, you walk up to them and you're like, these guys are going to put their chin in the air. What the fuck are you doing? Like, calm yeah, down, you know? Yeah, 100%. He um, threw his popcorn and drink, the drink. You see everything It's like a $20 drink. I was like, oh, yeah. that is embarrassing. Yeah, but Nate, you know, like, he's a true fighter. He was he clowning, it. though? I don't know what the scenario was, unless the guy was talking shit, because... Yeah. Let's talk about this anyway, because yeah. uh, this week alone, yeah, MMA, we've seen quite a, a bit of bullshit with fans in it. Yeah. And my thing is, as a fan, a lot of some fighters are actually about it. Because yeah. I don't know if you see Jorge Masvidal. Oh, yeah. There was a 17 year old, I think he was 17, yeah, he started talking shit to Masvidal yeah. this week yeah. at some event. Mm. Start talking shit to Masvidal. Masvidal must have pulled up on him, like he come towards him. Yeah. Like, 
I'm about that life, you know. Yeah. And then and was... I keep like, I'm 17, yeah. I'm 17, <laughs> I'm 17. I'll play the video, I'm, yeah. I'm 17. Masvidal tried to fight me. I said, yo, you see you people, yeah, yeah. you get, like, on there's, the main road, you get there smoked. Was, there was uh, Mike Perry with the other fighter, too. Oh, yeah, he but jumped in the But that fighter crowd. is long time retired, or mm. he's just some guy, you know? Yep. But, like, whenever someone has a name and you're talking shit in the crowd and, like, coming up to fight them, these guys are real, this is what they do. Yeah, 100%. And it, obviously, it takes a lot to, like, get them to fight out in the street for free because they're mm -hmm. prize fighters. Yep. A prize fighter that knows, you know, they know what they're capable of and they also know what they're worth. But 100%, 100%, but at the same time, yeah, yeah, I look at it as you're trying to take the piss, you're trying to violate. Yeah. So I'm going to show you, if you really think like you're talking nonsense and you can get away with it, yeah. it's like keyboard warriors, isn't it? When it comes to real life, yeah. they're not really about it. Hence yeah. why I'm like, yo, be careful. You can, like even with the fight game as well, you can talk, you can talk about fighters. Yeah. But sometimes you got to be careful what you say because you can meet some, and certain fighters that you meet them face to face. 100%. And they will check you. Yeah, I do think. And that's where your manhood will be yeah, questioned exactly. very quick, isn't it? I like how you said certain fighters. There's a lot of fighters that will turn the other cheek, you know, like, hey, let me just... D I feel like I'm one of them, actually. Like, yeah, I, I, will, I will just try to not... I will avoid any contact because I know what can happen. I, like, I know the extent of violence. But there's guys who grew up... I didn't grow up in a street environment. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people do. But there's guys that have been in those trenches and those are the guys that always react the way... Yeah, how you'd react on exactly. the street. It's on exactly. site. Exactly. 24/7. Let's they, go right there's now. No you know? And the thing is, there's, mm. they're not in the wrong. Everybody's different. You know, everybody has their own personality. Everyone has seen experiences. So these guys might have PTSD of them <laughs> in the streets, you know, and someone walking up to them, and you're over here just a fan mm -hmm. trying to talk shit. It's like get the yeah, hell out of here. I don't man. get fans like that. Like you gotta be careful, man. What's that like for you? Like the fact yeah. that you know, you know, someone's talking shit. Let put yourself in this kind of situation. Someone's talking shit. Yeah. But in your mind, you know what? Like, bro, I could fuck you up. Yeah. Like, legit, I just know, like, this guy, yeah. like, I could... Yeah. It would be wrapped up yeah. under five seconds, Yeah, it? exactly. How do you stop yourself from, like, you know what? I could actually... That so, feeling, you got that feeling, like, you know, man... Yeah. You... Dickhead, huh? Yeah, easy. <laughs> like, lights out quick. The thing is, How do like, you stop yourself? It's all social media, right? Mm. So, I've done the numbers on the KO. And I think that's the most evident one, right? Uh -huh. A million plus people have seen it. And I'm sure like every day, thousands more see it. Um, but that KO, a lot of people were like, and Somalis, brother, you know how it is. Your own people sometimes doubt you. It's like, was it the highest level? He, why didn't he block? He doesn't, like, they don't even watch MMA. ATP athlete, by the way, their Instagram always like always deals with these guys for me in a way yeah. kind of they're like oh you guys are the ones in the background they're yeah, like fighting in the comments they're like <laughs> shut the hell shut your mouth you know you know nothing about mma um great fighters get caught mm. great fighters get caught and by the way great fighters have gotten caught by like basic guys in the street yeah. it happens it's it's life you know everyone knows how to throw a haymaker like a wild well, punch, a a crazy, shot, a punch you know what i mean um but to the extent of like this wasn't crazy like this is basic why are you posting this it's like, what, what have you done in your life to put a fighter down? Yeah, 100%. When you know yourself that you would get beat by a random guy in the street yourself, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's keyboard warriors, isn't it? Keyboard warriors. But man. it's like you're saying, were they, you know when you click, do you ever click on these people's profiles? Oh, of course. That's the, one, that's what, the first thing you do. Like, let me check this what fucking guy out. What percentage were Somalis, would you say? Because you could tell a Somali from a mile away, innit? Yeah. And that's not me being yeah. any type of way. I know my people. Yeah. Uh, you know, you go to Kenya, you go to sleep, you know... You go anywhere in the world. I can, if you know Somalis, you can tell a Somali from yeah. a mile away. No, 100%. It's like one of them things like, if you're, white, if you're a black person yeah. in like some Scandinavian country where there's not a lot of black people, you see a yeah. black person, you just nod your head. 100%. Somalis are a bit like that as well. Yeah. You, you, could just, they, you can tell each other straight away. 100%. You don't have to say hello, ah, he's Somali. You yeah. get, you, you're obviously, you get them idiots that are like, no, I'm Ethiopian. I'm, <laughs> uh, but do you speak Amharic? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, no, but yeah. I eat injera. So, okay. You know what I mean? You got, they you got claim it. They but, claim uh, you're it. right, man. Joe Rogan's uh, podcast, some guy was talking about it, about um, how distinct Africa is. Yeah, and I think how, I've seen that clip. How they just put, um, how we ge generalize, this world just generalizes Africans. It's like, oh, I'm from Africa. And, Africa itself is the the biggest continent, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Out of it's seven. A big continent, yep. So it's like, why are you generalizing everyone? Like he's like, take a look at Nigerians mm -hmm. and then take a look at Somalis. Yep. He's like, you can tell them apart. Anyone can tell them yeah, apart. You go to South Sudan, you can tell them apart it's as like, well. Very it's evident. Like, it's like it's like saying like an American is like a, a South American. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yep. a US white guy, Caucasian guy. 
and it's the world Latino, ge- South American. Exactly. The world generalizes way too much. Like there's black people in like the Latino world, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, yeah, and the Cubans, like, the Yo so... Romeros and that full reference. For exactly. That don't know. So it's so drastic. And mm-hmm. so is Africa, man. You look at Morocco and all these guys, they're so fair skinned. You look at South Africa, it's different, you know? You go South Sudan, very dark. Very exactly. You go Somali, you got light skin, you got tall, mm-hmm. short, yep. fat, big, you know, body. I don't fat. Think, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you see your dimensions. Somalis, you don't have any in between. You're either all the way fat or you're all the way skinny. Ah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're either like you or you're... Yes, chunks. I was going to say... Chunks, I was I don't want to say chunks. Chunks, but no, res- no, no. Respect to chunks. He's done. He's his lost. Team. He's oh, done his work. He's lost so much. Allah ya barik. Bro, he's actually he's done inspiration, his man. Oh my god. Chunks is legend. Oh, yeah, but yeah. chunks, I had to say, it, man. You know yeah. this. You're the most we were high caliber. To say, I didn't want to say. I was, yes. being, I was being kind of politically, yeah. politically correct. No worries. But no since worries. you've touched on the Somali community, yeah. Let's talk about that. What's the, the support pr- been like from yeah. like the Somali community? Because look, I know, yeah. like personally, I know when it. Growing up in Kenya as well, over here as well with the Somalis, myself. Somalis are judgmental people. Yeah. Like, we are very judgmental people. Yeah. Extremely judgmental. Yeah. You know, Africans in general sometimes are as well. To our very own. Like, to our own people. That's the problem as well. To our own people. Very judgmental, regardless of what you're doing. Yeah. Ah, your son's an engineer. (laughs) But my son's a doctor. Yeah. Ah, what's your son doing? Ah, his son cleans the streets over there. Very... But even... Forget that. That's nothing. Even at a base level with something so simple, Somalis are very judgmental. No, definitely. Definitely. How, How have you found that? So I try to stay in touch. Obviously, I always raise the flag for a reason, right? And there's some main goals that I try to achieve and set for myself. First of all, I want to educate um, all of East Africa about the sport. Like, it's not just about Somalia, this, that. Mm -hmm. I actually, like, legitimately want to educate them. I was on Astan Sports, um, the biggest sports media group in Somalia. Mm -hmm. And the guy was calling it UFC. It's very funny. A lot of people saw it. Yep. Um, But... The interview when we did, I'm like, hey, first and foremost, like I have a lot of respect for you as a journalist, but this subject is one that you're not the most educated on. Mm-hmm. I'm like, the sport is called mixed martial arts. This is the origins of it. It's basically a 25 year sport. It basically combines all the martial arts you see around the world, jiu jitsu from Brazil, you know, um, all the karate, the taekwondo, the, the Thai Dutch from kickboxing, Thailand, all of it. Exactly. It combines all of it, and you just throw a ca- two guys in a cage and you let them go at it. You know, mm-hmm. it's very simple to explain, but like once people get it explained, they're like, oh, now. I know you know like it's very simple and I did it in Somali which like I, my Somali is okay like it's it's you know what I mean I live in uh, like America but I try to keep up with my Somali yeah. to give back to the fans um, like something mean, meaningful and the other goal is to just inspire some of the Somali kids to go out there whatever they want to do they can look up to me and say dude this guy's done it and it's such a ruthless sport like MMA why can't I do it in this avenue even if it's not MMA right like why mm-hmm. can't I do it in the avenue of um, production of the avenue of like soccer the avenue of anything you know what I mean singing um, so that's one of my goals and that's the biggest goal to give back to the kids inspire the kids and that's a lot of goals of the Somali guys right now like ATP athlete all the podcasts that are out there Prince Salad shout out Prince Salad M- Muhyiddin you know all these guys man mm-hmm. you don't know like the extent why we raise the flag why we show um, where we're from so much you know it's not it's not just something like Oh, I'm from Somalia, please. You know what I mean? It's not that. It's a bigger purpose. Like a bandwagon. Like, I'm exactly. Somali, so you should follow me. Exactly. You should support me. Exactly. Now, see, my thing is, like, you see when people raise up a flag, for example, like, you got the guys like that raise the Kenyan flag, you got the Somali flag. Yeah. And you want to give back to the community. Like, you want to show them, like, you can do this. Yeah. Do you feel indebted to them? Like, Here's to the, the community? Thing. Like, do you feel like you owe them the something? Guy, the guy from Astana asked me this. He's like... Like, and I heard this question from a mile away. He's a Somali brother. He was talking Somali. Mm. He's like, he's like, he said Mo Farah. He's like, look at Mo Farah. He's like, for the Olympics, he raises the British flag. I was like, I know what you're about to say, dude. I can hear it from a mile away. <laughs> he's like, is there a chance that you don't represent um, your country in the big stages, you know? Mm-hmm. Or like, just change your flag for the UFC, which a lot of guys do. It's, yeah, not, it's yeah, like not uncommon, it's not you know? And the Olympics especially. Um, so I was like, no fucking way, no. Mm. Like, I don't care what comes to me, what sponsors I don't get, whatever happens, I'm going to raise the same flag I've always risen, you know? You know your roots. Um, and there's nothing wrong with raising another country's flag, if, especially if they've helped you as much as uh, Great Brain has helped Mo Farah. Yep. Um, but for me personally, I know what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to inspire, what mm-hmm. I'm trying to give back to. And that's the, the kids in Somalia, man. How do you get to that? You see that kind of mindset? Because I Muhyiddin, mean, for example, is the same. Yeah. And, and I know quite ATP is the same as well. And like, you yeah. know what? All right, this is a clothing brand, for example. I'm a fighter. Yeah. So here we are. We, we've got our clothing brand. Yeah. I'm a fighter. You could do whatever you want. Yeah. 
what point do you kind of put it in your head? Like, for me, obviously, I'm a bit more of a pessimistic kind of person. And we're having this conversation, like, on Saturday. Yeah. Like, obviously, with certain things in life, I've kind of learned, well, maybe it's the wrong way of thinking. Yeah. People don't really care like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. As much as you try to give back or you try to show, mm. yo, I'm going to do this for this one, I'm going to try help, yeah. I'm going to try show them that there's a better way. Yeah. Maybe I'm like a glass half empty kind of person more than glass yeah. half full. You seem to be glass half full. Yeah. Like, they don't really care. Yeah. No, Do you ever man. feel like that? Like when you see the comments, you're like, ah, yeah. but then or does the good kind of outweigh man. all so, that shit? With promotion on Instagram, like they give me the insights, the numbers. I know what I pay for in the promotions and everything. Mm -hmm. The Somalis back home, this is a plain fact, are way more um, basically positive, way more like, yo, horasa, you know, like keep going, don't stop. Mm -hmm. Those guys are the guys that need someone to look up to. The Somalis in the States, UK, Sweden, whatever it is, dude, they, they're living like us. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Good. Those are the guys that like are a little more judgmental. Like, hey, I'm living a good life. Let's see, like, let me pick on him a little bit. They're yeah, the yeah. ones in the commas. Hey, like, don't do this, don't do that. How do you deal with that? Picky. Because like, I, I, I know some fighters, it gets to them. Yeah. And especially, like, obviously, because, like, I'd cover Cage Warriors, for example, yeah? Yeah. And it's a smaller organisation. It's, like, almost like... I don't want to say... Fe it's, like, feeder to the UFC, yeah, basically, yeah? definitely for England, yeah. Yeah, you get very good quality fights, but, yeah. obviously, the fighters haven't really blown yeah. in that sense. It's not until they're usually... Some do blow, like, you got the yeah, McGregor's, yeah. the Pimlets, yeah. Paddies. They blow before they go to the UFC, and then yeah. it starts off a big deal straight away. Definitely. Some, they've got a graft proper. They're yeah. on, like... Some you, there's fighters like on way less followers than you. They're like yeah. five thousand, two thousand followers. One hundred percent. But they are legit, very good fighters. Yeah. You leave a hate comment. Yeah. You get abused. They will away. see it. So fighters, they see it. By the way. Yeah, hundred percent. If you're do. out there and you want to troll, troll, do it because they will see it. Actually, like it's. I'm not gonna say like no, I don't, don't see the do comments, it. this and that. Yeah, yeah. Everyone looks at their own content. Mm -hmm. They look at their comments. They read through it. They see everything. Me, man, personally, I try to have fun with it. The big one for me that they say is look about and I've talked about it. It means yeah, what? Pasta legs. Pasta legs, right? Pasta legs. And that was always like a funny thing. Or uh, like like not a, not me personally, but they would say Farah look about stuff. Mm -hmm. Evidently my last name is Farah. Yeah, yeah. And every time I get posted, they're like Farah look about stuff, you know? Yep. And like a funny version. Like but this last head kick showed, hey, it's this not really guy, pasta legs. Even if it is, right? Like yep. they can do fucking damage. Yep. And a lot of the guys said that like in a funny way. Mm -hmm. Um and I tried to have fun. I tried to comment back like Is that your way of kind of not because we gotta talk about fighters mentality as yeah. well, you know? Is that your way of like, it's not gonna get to me? You know, with hate yeah. comments, some people obviously there's all this stuff with mental health at the moment yeah. going on. Yeah. That's the one way, you know what, it's not gonna get to me. So yeah. the way like your I don't wanna say defense mechanism with it, because yeah. You gotta be very strong minded not to yeah. kinda yeah. I remember when I first got my first hate comment on YouTube, bruv, yeah. it took me back for me. <laughs> it, it sent me back. I was like, There um, are ones, there are ones that stuck. like there it are... wasn't even that deep. It was just a hate comment. It yeah. just weren't like, you know, nothing about fighting or something. Yeah. Just not nice, isn't it? There are ones that and my legitimately... heart sunk to my stomach. I was like, Yeah. Uh, oh, like, you know what? But yeah. that was the first one ever since, obviously. Now I know how to deal with it. Because yeah. I'll, I'll run it through my mind, like, yo. This is how I'll deal with it. Because before you start off on these kind of things and you put your face out there, saying the way you're saying, you'll be a bit timid yeah. before you started social media, yeah? Yeah. Like, you kind of prepare out. Well, I did anyway. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm, this is what I'll do if I do get this. If yeah, this yeah. happens, I'll do this. Everyone goes through that stage. There are legitimate ones that, like, damn, that was a good one. Like, that guy really did What's the worst me? one? I was like, oh, fuck. You? Yeah. All right, cool. I'll give it to you, but yeah. uh, that hurt. There's, there's guys that, like, they really, like, do some research. Or do you know, you know? what I say so people don't? Like, because if this comes yeah, out, yeah. some people say, yeah, no, it's cool. okay, man. Like, yeah. So here's the thing. I, I promote so much at a young age mm -hmm. that a lot of people say, like, oh, like, like when they look at Justin Bieber or, like, the, the, the stars that got famous when they're really young. It's a, it's a good and bad thing. People yeah. only look at the bad. Like, they're like, oh, he, he's going to go crazy like Britney Spears mm -hmm. and all this. But you know what? You look at Justin Bieber now. This guy has seen it all at a young stage, yep. and he can control himself. He can, he takes care of everything, you know. Yeah, he's gone through it. He's so exactly. Done now. And as a fighter, it's so important to start promoting yourself young age, because these guys, well, like there's um, there's fighters in the UFC that have ten thousand followers. I'm yeah. Like, I'm like, what? Hold up. Where were you all these years? Like you, like but if that's you are risk if understanding you, the no, game. No, no. Exactly. If you are risk, that's another thing, man. If you are risking your life to step in, right? There's two things you have to do for yourself. You have to train your hardest mm -hmm. to make sure you don't fucking die in a cage, right? 100%. And you have to promote yourself. That's the other, like, I don't know how people think 
you have, if you're a fighter, you have to train your hardest so you don't get hurt, so you win the fights. That's the important part, which every fighter has to do, number one. Yep. The other one is getting that fight you just risk your life to, to people's eyes. Mm -hmm. Simple, amateurs, pros. Promotion. Promote Promotion. Yourself. Get yourself out there. And real, real, like the, everyone's real, obviously, but the guys in the game that understand it are understand that is the ones that are making the most money, getting the big fights, getting everything. Yeah, 100%. people need to understand that. You know. Yeah, the social media game is it's it's, it's a big thing. Yeah, it's a big thing. You got to put yourself out yeah. there. If you don't, you don't get fights. Because again, you look at Dana with the UFC. He looks at numbers. Yeah. And if you don't bring in numbers, exactly, he don't want you because you're bringing him in nothing as well. Dana White contender series. Think think of O'Malley. He made a show that will always be iconic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Obviously, if it's if you're a wrestler or some boring ass fighter, like no one wants to really watch you anyway. But the thing is, what you can do to help is promote yourself in a way that yeah, there's oh, other you know ways what? of doing this it. guy. Yeah, there's other means of making yourself entertaining because there are legitimately boring fighters, um, crotch sniffers, guys that don't finish on the ground. If you don't finish on the ground, if you try not to finish on the ground, like you're boring. I don't care yeah, what if anyone you says. Just hold. If People you just love hold. Habib because he finishes guys on the ground. People love these Oliveras and everyone. Because they legitimately want to kill you on the ground. It's like Cain Velasquez wanna, as well. They don't want to hold... And, you nah. know what I mean? That's not what's going on here. They're looking so it's to like, smash. if you're that guy already, you're a bum. But there's things you can do to be less of a bum. Yeah, social media, you know I mean? use it. Promote, promote yourself it. the right way. Make yourself a character. And maybe holding on to legs will actually become uh, a moneymaker. Now, that's if you know what you're doing. That yeah. is if you know what... You've got to know what you're doing, man. Yeah. You've got to know what you're doing. Yeah. Fighters mentality again. I'm very adamant about this one, man. Yeah, I know. I know you're passionate I've, I've with the whole some, social media I've thing. I've seen some dumb, dumb dinosaurs that are like, "Why the hell do you post this and that?" Like fighters, I'm like, dude, look at you. Like no one cares about your fights. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they know who they are. And there's also like older guys that are like, "You should focus on training." I'm training every day. Don't worry about my training, by the way. I'm training all the time. You know what I mean? Like, when I come out here to London and take a trip, I just got out of a freaking three-month camp, so I take a little bit of a break at yeah, the end of the 100%. year. But, but you're training I'm gonna again today, eh? Like, when I go back in, I'm going to jump right back into the tank, the shark tank, you know, and fight in February. But don't worry about my training. I have my programs. But just know the social media is an important factor yeah. in my success already. It's prize fighting at the end of the day. Exactly. And it's like, what was it? It's like, what do you bring to the table? I know it's more of like dating kind of question, but yeah. it's like any business anyway. Yeah. What do you bring to the table? What can you offer if you're bringing in numbers yeah. and there's bare people watching? 100%. Um, exactly. You know, that's that's yeah. where you make your money. And it's that's what, that's the factor, right? Then you have the X factor of guys who get legitimate one-shot KOs. That's when you're a star. Mm -hmm. That's when your thing is going like this. When you're sleeping, or, people. Or, exactly. Or you're actually mauling guys like Hamza, like looking at Dana and slamming him down. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that like, Jing Liang one was it? Like, that was dirty. Yeah. He picked him up and he's there talking to him. He's like, yeah. that's that's. I believe that's the uh, grappling ver equivalent of a knockout. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a mauling. It's a mauling. You know what I mean? Habib's grappling prowess and Hamza's grappling prowess is equivalent to one shot KOs. They're the same it's thing. It's just over a longer period of time. They're talking to the crowd as they maul you and you can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't get it's more raw City. than that. So basically, so let's go back to football. It's the Man City-Liverpool analogy. Liverpool's yeah. cut for the throat, kill. Exactly. This, uh, City is... Yeah. A thousand, it's the grappling, Exactly. Isn't it? By a thousand cuts. Exactly. That's, that's City's exactly City's more of the grappler is. and Liverpool's more of the gag and press and KO yeah, finishes. Yeah, 100%. Very quick. Liverpool want to win by two, three, four, five, which on are KO neck. shots. You know? Man City got no um, problem winning 1 0 and letting you suffer. Exactly. Let's talk about fighters' mentality, yeah? Yeah. Before a fight, or even just outside a fight, you know, when you're just yeah. sat in bed, yeah. you're sat on the couch, you're daydreaming, you're doing nothing. Yeah. The thought of losing. Yeah. The thought of getting knocked out, yeah. having family. You said you're a showman. Yeah. So obviously, I know you've definitely visualized yeah. it numerous times in your head. Of course. Big crowd, you're there, yeah. sat there, big crowd. You're spot on. Walking out. Beef with the Mali is ringing out. <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> You're walking in, you've got the Somali flag. Yeah. But then it doesn't go according to plan. Yeah. You get mauled. Because, yeah. again, as a fighter, Habib talks about this a lot. Yeah. Like, in terms of being real with yourself. Like, I'm not invincible. Yeah. I'm human. Yep. So when you're visualising, yeah. yeah, and you know, like, you know what, the thought of losing yeah. it might be it. Yeah. It can happen. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Or do so you, do you think about there's it? There's stages in, like, the training camp and fight. So the f I feel like the one of the big pressure points people don't talk about is the day you accept the fight. Mm -hmm. You accept that matchup. This is the guy I'm fighting next. You sign the contract. You take your picture. The promotion posts it. It's that real. day, I feel like, was one of the worst. Oh, because really? Because you know what it is? It's that you know this is the most unprepared you are closer to that fight. 
because you just signed the contract. Like right now, you look at yourself, you're like, I'm not fit to fight right now. Uh. But you, like, you know what I mean? The pressure gets to you, the anxiety. But you know what it is? You look at that picture, that, promoter, that promotion picture of you and the opponent, and every day you go through training camp, you're, what does Poirier say? He says, uh, Paid in full. Paid in full. And he also says something else where pre uh, preparation gets rid of something. Anxiety or something. Uh, no something like that. So the preparation, confidence and preparation. Mm -hmm. So his confidence builds as he prepares through the training camp. Okay. Um, which is the same for everyone. So like that, that initial moment you signed the contract was a big moment, right? You, you got that adrenaline. You're like, let's do it. This is the matchup that's happening. But as you go through that training camp, the confidence just builds and builds and builds and builds. Then again, you hit that wall of weight cut a little bit. Am I going to be able to make the weight? This is going to be tough. But the night of the fight, that's when it all comes together. The night like. before. The, the night before, I sleep okay. A lot yeah. of people say like I struggle, like I struggle with sleep. Um, oh, look, I guess, stop. Yeah, <laughs> wine. <laughs> but I, like the night before, like I'm okay. Like I just eat, you know, I go to sleep well. But the day like of, um, you have to wake up refreshed. You have to wake up good. Stay calm. You're with your team, you know. Having a good team is very important around you. Mm -hmm. But it all comes down to that time you walk into. I like to get a feel for the cage beforehand, like the day before and the day of in the morning. Um, but when you're backstage, you're getting your hands wrapped. That's a big moment. You're like, you know what? Let's get in there. Um, At what point does it hit you? Like, it's real. Like, once is it hands getting wrapped? Is it when you're warming up? Or is it once you walk out or the moment you step into the cage? You know you're what like, it is? All right, we're here. You know what it is? It's that fight before you. What do you mean? The fight right before you go out. Uh -huh. um, maybe you're, if you're the first guy on the show, like you don't get that. Like, ah, that, okay, okay. But the fight yeah. right before you, or maybe even two fights for some guys, but for me, it's the fight right before. Um, when they're like, okay, here's the seventh fight, you know, introducing this, whatever it is. Um, you're like, oh shit, like I'm next after this one. Mm -hmm. um, it's just an eerie, weird feeling. Like, you know, your heart's gonna start pumping, you know, the adrenaline's coming, you know, all of that is gonna come and condense. And then, you know, what doesn't help? When it's like a, a fast KO or like a fast submission. Oh, shit, shit. When and you, you know what ready? also doesn't help? Uh huh. If it goes the distance. Oh, in really? a weird way, you know what I mean? Why is um, it because it's being dragged out? It draws out. Now. out. It, it draws out, out, you yeah. know what I mean? I feel like it's something I have to improve, maybe, not to think of it so crazy like that. Mm -hmm. But you can't help but say, you know what, I'm next. Let's do this, you know? Um, I was in the red corner for this one, so he walked out before me. Yep. I thought I actually preferred that um, because. He, that guy had to be in the cage as my whole walkout. Wait for you. It almost builds the moment. It yeah. builds the moment as like larger than life. Like can you put yourself in the shoes like like you're in the cage right now and beef with Molly's like don't you I know can what imagine. I mean? You know I what I mean? Like, like, like I'm a I like to fantasize a lot, yeah. I'm yeah. a day I'm a proper daydreamer, yeah. really. And obviously, if you watch a lot of football, yeah. you, you picture yourself doing the whole Gerard 35 yeah. yards out, exactly. you know, Anfield going crazy. Yeah. And obviously, if you're a, a yeah. UFC fan, yeah. you picture yourself walking out, knocking someone, how that possibly would feel. Exactly. I'd hate to walk out yeah. first yeah. and watch my opponent walk out. Yeah. Because who was it uh, recently? Cage Warriors as well. I think it was uh, Morgan Shaya. He'd come out first and then he had to watch Paul Hughes yeah. with the Irish crowd going mad just yeah. above him because yeah. your call was very small, yeah? yeah? And he's there just watching him, staring him down. But I knew straight away yeah. that's his way of psyching, not psyching himself out yeah. by watching him like, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. You're going to watch me too. Yeah. But this other guy's there enjoying the fan, the music. They're all singing along. Yeah. So... You know, the tension's yeah. rising. You can feel it. Yeah, you can feel it. I don't like, in the weigh-ins, I like staring at the guy down. My my last two MMA opponents, which the two fights I had, he, they actually didn't look in my eyes. They mm. looked down at my chest. Do you feel anything with that, um, though? No, I didn't feel anything. The first one, it was a little weird because it was the first time. Uh -huh. The second time it happened, I was like, dang, this guy did it too. It was a little odd. But in the actual, f like, when I'm walking out, and I don't like to look at the guy when I walk out. Mm -hmm. And when I get in the cage, I, I don't really look at them in the eyes. Why you know is that I mean? more like, it's my moment? Yeah, it's like, it's like, this is my thing. I'm not worried about this guy. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, in a weird way, I'm just like, let's get the fight started. Then I'm going to start looking at his chest, looking at everything, look at my yeah. shots, pick my shots. But I'm not walking out and staring him, staring at him in the cage. Like, if you see my whole walkout, I posted the video. Mm -hmm. um, when I walk out, I just take my shirt off. I need a towel, scrape my feet a little bit, drink some water, Vaseline is there. And I always, like, climb up the steps, put my hands up, let's go, you know? You're ready to go. Walk around, fist bump the ref. Um... But that moment where like they're announcing your name, I'm not there. I'm not one of those guys like that just stare, you know, that just stare blankly. Mm -hmm. I, that's not me. I, it never is. I don't stare at anyone blankly. I like, you know, why would I do in a fight? 
Aldo looks down, which yep. I think builds the pressure even more. Like, on yourself or on the fighter, on the other on your opponent? No, on yourself, man. Yeah. But for him, it works. Obviously, he has fought so many times. See, this is. But I'm he... saying, me personally, mm -hmm. looking at the ground and the way he paces, it's very iconic. It looks yep. amazing when he does it. See, he's what you know. Like I'm a big fan of like fighter walkouts. Yeah? yeah. I love a good fighter walkout. Yeah. Aldo was like my favorite guy because he used to come out to Feel run this town. In in when you hear end. that, yep. you knew. Rihanna, and I, I, I love him. Like we could, I could talk about fighter walkouts yeah. all day. Yeah, because. Yeah. Fighters again, this is another thing. We're talking social media, yep, yeah? Yep. Walkouts make that poor iconic. Yes. Like Aldo, you knew when that run yeah. hits, and yeah. You know who's Connor coming. Connor with Foggy Do, Habib with his Dagestan song. Yep. These guys are iconic with this and the hat, you know? Everything is noticed. Don't think but, it's not noticed. Sometimes it's messed up here. Yeah. Like I don't yeah. know if you ever remember Mark Kominik, one of his yeah. uh his thing is Coaches passed away, yeah. and he came out. I swear to you, I felt so bad. But yeah. this is the time Diddy's uh, "I'm Coming Home" yeah. came out. Yeah, yeah. so it's still fresh, and everyone, everyone's getting psyched yeah. up for it. Yeah. So he come out to "Coming Home." Yeah. Coach died. Yep. You know, I'm like, it's all emotional. This is nice, man. I hope he yeah. knocked him out. He was fighting a Korean Zombie. Wow. And he got sparked. Crazy. It's like John Jones with the Gustafson thing. Yeah. I'm coming home. Yeah. Who was it? There's a fighter recently as well. I don't know why, but even Aldo is pissed me off. He's changed his walkout shoes. Yeah. I'm no, like, why? This recent fight, he had it. He kept it. Not but bad. there's a, there's some great walkouts. Like I think John DC, Jones, if I'm not mistaken. DC. He, yeah, DC has a good one. John Jones fought in Baltimore, if I'm not mistaken. And you know that big football player from the Ravens? Like He's like iconic. The, I don't want you to Lewis, NFL. something Lewis. You watch but NFL? he does the dance. Um, it's, he does like the boom, boom, and then he... Ah, Ah, but basically, I know what you're talking about. I know his what name you're is something about, Lewis, but, but I don't know John Jones that. basically uh, commented, uh, put out his music, the Ravens song, mm -hmm. and he did the same thing when he was walking out. He's like, let's go. But the crowd was so into it. But there's some neat little is things you one can do. Champ is here. Champ is here. I think it's that is one. Is it that one? Yeah. But uh, the sh the, basically, the walkout is part of the show. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, he is. WWE, why do you think... These guys understand entertainment more than anyone. Yeah, I think... It's they, iconic. Exactly. Undertaker. The entrance is iconic. The video games have the same entrance as real life for a reason. Yeah. You, they're synonymous with this character, yeah, the way the they walk out. Kobe the UFC, I actually, WWE. Exactly. The, angle. The, the UFC, a lot of people believe, don't do enough which I also believe they don't do enough. Like, one championship does well, Bellator does well, but UFC in particular, they just let the guy walk out. Like, it's good. The, the fans are there. They let him walk out of, like, some corner. You know what I mean? But I love the one, McGregor and Mendez, where they had the live singing. Yeah, yeah, Sinead O'Connor. They need to do things like that more, man. That just builds up the anticipation, the, the intensity even more. It makes it like a show. Yeah, 100%. Like even for you out. at home. Yeah. Before we continue, BT Sport, pattern up. Like these are when it comes to fire walkouts, they cut to advertisement. It pisses me off. <laughs> oh my god, it pisses me off. They cut to advertisements. Yeah, but it's I'm free like, for uh... you guys. It's not pay per view, right? No, the pay per view. They, they, we pay for it now. Yeah. You know, they, they cut to advertisements. Mm. I'm like, why are you doing this? Oh man. But yeah, the walkouts are important. I was about to mention yeah. another. Oh, uh, you mentioned one championship. Like, if you look at like for those of you that don't watch one championship, yeah, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. But Stamp Great. Fairtex. Great promotion. Stamp Fairtex. She's yeah. one of my favorite female fighters at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Well, she has been for a hot second. Yeah. Her walkout, she's there dancing, she's a new character all the time. Wow. But it's iconic with her. And yeah. one championship catered to it. Yeah. They give her the little sparkles yep, and everything. Yep. The fireworks. Yeah, everything. they let her dance and then come on and yep. handle business. Exactly. But it's very key. No, of course, man. And boxers, I love the way boxers do it too, man. They just wear the full robe, the full everything. It's a show. It's a show. And the newer guys, like the newer boxers, like Gervonta walked out with Lil Durk the other day. Oh, yeah, they fought. got people rapping and with it's like them as well. It's like the guy's not even rapping. Lil Durk is not rapping. He's but guess man. what? Just him being there is makes it a hundred times greater than if he was just on the speakers and he wasn't there live. Yeah, 100%. People are like, this is fucking Lil Durk and Gervonta walking out together. Yeah. Fighting, you know? This is insane. And when I think of it as a fighter, I'm like, damn, I wish I had a rapper, you know, walking out with me. Yeah, maybe you could get the guy that sort of does beef with the Marlies. Scorbizzi. Is he from here? He's in London, man. He's from here, isn't he? He's yeah. from here. He's from here. Yeah, I'm trying to get a hold maybe, of him. Inshallah, you can't, you... Scorbizzi, what's going on, man? <laughs> you Come fight on. for fight in the UK, or if yeah. he does go to America, you link up with him, he walk yeah. you out. Yeah, man, definitely. Before we wrap up, future. Yeah. What are we saying? 2022, it's only two weeks away, anyway, from yeah. the day we're recording this. Exactly. Yeah, two weeks away. Yep. What, what's the plans for 2022? So, inshallah, I'm uh, going to be fighting in February. Um, in the States. In the States, in Virginia, again, the same promotion for a title at 125 pounds. The promotion has had a very hard time finding me fights mm -hmm. due to the KO and the social media and everything. Um, there's been a lot of guys not accepting the fights, but I believe one of them is going to step up and will accept one of them at 125. Um, and inshallah, I'll have my first amateur MMA belt under my belt, um, basically, and 
after that, I just want to keep competing in MMA. Um, but inshallah, this, the, the goal is to just get MMA fights this year. No kickboxing. Just stay on top of the MMA. A lot of training. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be a well on my way to go um, pro, I believe, after this next year, 2022. How many fights um, do you think you need to have this year before going pro? So I, I had four fights um, la this year. Mm -hmm. And I started in March. Next year, I'm starting in February. Yep. So I want five fights. Inshallah. That's so the nine goal, and no you know amateur. I mean? Exactly. And then we go pro. Exactly. And obviously... And all MMA, five MMA yep. fights. That's the goal, inshallah. Um, and the thing is, amateurs, man, like, it's all experience. It's all this. I'm not trying to protect some record. I don't give a shit. You know what no. I mean? I want to taste some hard fights. I had a draw, obviously. I would love to taste the defeat as an amateur. I think it only helps you um, grow, especially in MMA. Mm -hmm. The best fighters are the ones that learn. Oliveira, Poirier, all these guys. They lost when they were younger. They literally grew up from a kid to a man in the cage, and that's what I plan on doing. And as we go on, 2020, once you become pro, obviously the goal is the UFC. Yeah. Would you ever sign for Bellator? Of course. Bellator, oh, you would. LFA, all I'll, these guys. I've spoken, to a few, I've spoken to a few fighters, yeah, and some of yeah. them will say, I'll never ever touch a UFC. Ever. No, no, sorry, yeah. no, UFC, sorry, Bellator, Bellator I'd never go. No, there's some it's, great, it's the UFC or nothing for me. No, there's some great promotions, man. And um, I guess when you fight Bellator, it does, it does make the UFC a little more hesitant to get you because they're... Direct you're, rivals, you're, yeah, you're, they're direct you're rivals, you know. But um, those feeder organizations like CFFC, LFA for the UFC, um, those I would love those to fight. Those are legit in. promotions yeah. as well. LFA, legit. if you've not seen LFA, boy, yeah, there's some nasty fights there yeah, as well. Yeah, of course. And I would love to fight overseas. I would love to fight anywhere, honestly. But the ultimate goal is the UFC, um, and that's how my social media is headed. That's how my coaching is headed. That's how my fights are headed, and the training as well. What would that mean to you to be the like? Let's say you do, because there are a few Somali fighters, obviously. Yeah, yeah. For example, like Muhi, you've yep. got a few yep. that are ahead of you yeah. almost in terms of their trajectory. Age, they're a bit and older and than yep. your age trajectory, yeah. where they're going. Yeah. What would it mean to you? Let's say you made it before them. Oh, let's say, no, forget that. Let's not, it's not a competition. Yeah, yeah. A, who gets there first? You know, yeah. one gets there. Yep. It's almost like you've all got there. Exactly. You know, you celebrate each other's success. Yeah. Something certain people need to learn how to do. You know, yes. if you're one of them ones that's clown on people <laughs> and you see someone succeeding and you want to hate, yeah. just, you know what? Take a step back. Go work on yourself. 100%. And then learn reassess. to, like, exactly, reassess, man. You've got to be yep. happy for people when yeah. they're succeeding. 100%. They don't have to be Somali as well. So I flew all the way out here from Muhyiddin, man. It would mean the world to me for him to just get a you UFC shout out, Dana mm -hmm. White contender series something you know um but this is what people have to understand ufc is a global sport it's not an american basketball nascar no, it's not that mm -hmm. this is on football yeah. soccer level of uh globalization so ufc wants to reach every corner of this world that's why they don't just take all the russians the crazy fighters and mm -hmm. uh, the, all the brazilians and pump it up with that they want polish they want they want, they want everyone you know what i mean they want nigerians they want new zealand there's so many new zealand fights they want china now china that was not known for fighting um in the mma mm -hmm. um, but now like chinese people are everywhere in the mma yeah. scene but basically there's regions they still haven't reached right somalia is one of them somalia, east africa is one east africa Bro, shout out david onama he's the first ugandan fighter from like first East yep. African fighter, if I'm not mistaken, David Onama wow. recently fought Mason Jones, another Cage Warriors former champion as well. Yeah. Yes, there is a reason I know. Um, yep. And he did very well. Last minute opponent as well. Yeah. Last minute short notice replacement. Yeah. He stepped in. Yep. He gave Mason Jones a fight. He, he hurt him. Yeah. Like and Mason Jones, like he has very good pedigree over here. Former Cage Warriors champ as well. Yep. But shout out David Onama. That's the first guy from like this East African region. Ugandans oh, are yeah. doing their thing as well. Exactly, what would it mean man. to you to be like the first Somali fighter? No, let's, let's not say first Somali. Yeah. Just the first Somali, Somali fighter. fighter in the UFC. What would that would mean be, to you? It would be the world to me, you know? Um, it would be the world the day a uh, Somali fighter, Muhi or, you know, Sabe, Sabe or any of these guys feet. step in just to the UFC. Because that opens the door for not just me, but generations to come. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The second that one gets that, their foot the in the Indian door. pearl, the white star, the, the the blue around it, once you see that in the UFC octagon, the iconic state, the iconic octagon, people are just gonna say, "What in the world? There's a Somali. This is the first time I've seen it." Yep. And guess what? It's just gonna inspire more youth. It's gonna lead uh, Dana and the UFC to look at other um, Somali fighters to build. Yep. You know, 100%, that whole region. Because the Somali community is pretty big. Oh, it's it's, huge, almost, it's like, I'd say it's, uh, it's bigger than the Dagestani community by far anyway. Because yeah, no, Somalis are millions, everywhere man. in the yeah. world anyway. Yeah. And my thing is, before, is we're just about to wrap up anyway. Yeah. Unfortunately, for me personally, at least, at least from what I've seen, yeah. it's not to end on a downer. Yeah. But Somalis aren't always the most supportive of other Somalis. We spoke about this yeah. earlier. Yep. But I think, you know, sometimes when things are a, a trend, yep. everybody wants to jump on. 100%. So it's like one person gets their foot in the door. 
oh, is Somali's there? Yep, yep, yep. You know, 100%. and then the train just follows. 100%. So it's been a trend to be Somali in the last couple of months with Nima Happy and all the TikTok stuff going on. Everyone, um, but the, here's the thing, right? It opened our young guys' eyes, even myself, like, Guys, embrace your culture, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So embrace your culture, be happy to be Somali, and don't make it a fucking trend to be happy about being Somali. Don't let that like stop you from posting all the time about Somali culture, Somali music, Somali athletes. Just stick with it, help your people, let them be positive, let them grow, um, and be happy for them, that's it. 100%. Prince Salad said the same thing as well, you know? Because yeah. it's almost like, you know when things are a trend, when they die yeah. down, yeah. you almost go back to being yeah, exactly, man. but it's then ridiculous. what you should learn from that yourself, like all Somalis, whatever, Yeah. You know, be proud of what you are, because yeah, when you were being celebrated, you're happy to chest out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. So oh, I'm, I'm, so I'm not Ethiopian. I'm not Kenyan. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Those lot. Oh uh, yeah, those are yeah. yeah. I'm from Britain. Yep. I'm from Britain, brother. You know me. Yeah. No, none of that. Be yeah. proud of you. Are 24/7, 365 100%. days of the year. 100 percent. And the reason why people think like that is because generations before them did the same thing. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, they're yeah. like, they're like, I want to follow my parents. That they weren't happy to be Somali, and they raised this flag or they they claimed this area, and it's like, dude. You're just claiming the same negativity and your future generation will claim the same negativity. They will not want it, anything to do with Somalia. So it's like change it now or forever trend. just fucking leave us. 100%. Awesome. And that's the best way. To, I don't think there's a better way to wrap it up. I agree, man. Appreciate you coming on. That's it. Yusuf, Thank you very man. much. Thank you, brother. Ahmed Farah, his link will be in the bio. Yeah, one Farah MMA. Follow him. Don't be a pagan. Yeah. I know some of you people. <laughs> yeah, I'll follow, I'll follow. And they never pagan follow. Pagan is an English word, huh? I, I know, no, wait, wait, wait. Before we do, we're about to go. What, what slang words have you picked up? Oh, there's so many, man. So, like, uh, pardon is one I always used to say, like, excuse me. Pardon. Pardon <laughs> is such a like, classic. Like, where have you been? You've been countryside. Yeah. He's in um, London. He's in Tokyo like, country. Pardon. What do, you, what do you think is what we say in the US? But uh -huh. I've learned. Uh, what do you reckon? <laughs> oh, what do you bro. reckon? He's that's... been watching these standards or something, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. Like coronation. Um, but there's some there's some any... there's some funny words. I actually like HP sauce. If you guys know HP sauce, um, I had a proper English breakfast. I know these guys, these lot, these lot is another one I've learned. <laughs> these guys or lot have not learned yeah. um, to enjoy HP sauce, which I enjoy thoroughly. Um, I like the English breakfast. I loved everything about London, man. It's been a pleasure being awesome. here. Awesome. Yeah. We look forward to having you back. Inshallah, Inshallah, one day you Inshallah. fight over here as well. Yes, that's Maybe the goal, Maybe a whole man. Somali card, uh, fight, that bunch is of hint, fighters from Somali as well on a card. That is in today's training. Yeah. So, it'll be good. Inshallah. Inshallah. Ahmed Farah, everyone. Thank Peace. you, brother.